Hi, and welcome to week one, our first lesson for this semester, for the summer semester. So in week one, we would click there, okay, and then you have your marketing uh, chapter one PowerPoint, which is what we're going to go over today. You also have a video uh, to watch from Robert Cialdini, who is basically the guru uh, of negotiations, uh, persuasion. Uh, he's written many, many books about it. Um, so if you ever want to go to a go-to type book of how to persuade or how to sell or uh, market, um, direct marketing, uh, he would be a great person to start your process. Uh, and this is an outline of what uh, the video uh, can, is focused on. Uh, these are his main points that uh, there are six shortcuts uh, to human behavior, reciprocity, scarcity, authority, consistency, liking, and consensus. And once you watch the video, you'll have a better understanding of what he means by those. Okay. Then there's an article, uh, Assessing Market Attractiveness. So here's the article to read, uh, that you could also contribute in your discussion board some information uh, you gathered from this article. And then once you're finished all those, then you would click on this, the discussion board. Now you won't be able to see anything on the discussion board until you actually post your first uh, thread. You're creating a thread. So you would click on creating a thread and then you would post your 50 plus words on there and then you would hit okay and then you'll be able to see everybody else's thread. Uh, if you forget uh, the directions, I have them right here of exactly what's required for it. Okay? So uh, and this is right on the week one and it's on every week. They are identical for the discussion board. Okay, so click on Chapter 1 PowerPoints, and you will actually come to the three different PowerPoint presentations for uh, Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3 for the first three weeks. We're just worried about this one. And I already have it opened, if I can find it, since I have a lot of things open, unfortunately. Um, so it would be this one. Yay, I picked the right one. Okay, so market research from data to information to action. Okay. Remember, if you don't take action, this whole thing is, is pointless. There's nothing, you can have great thoughts, great ideas, uh, great intentions, but if you don't take action, then they don't accumulate to anything. So we we'll go here, this is just a little thing. Uh, almost everyone is a consumer of marketing research. Uh, do you agree or disagree with that? Well, if you're a consumer and you purchase things, uh, then you're contributing to market research. Okay. Uh, fast fact, in the first quarter of 2010, a decade ago, 53% of households had HDTVs. Uh, I imagine that's really close to 100% by today. I saw at Walmart, uh, what was it, like a 75-inch uh, television on sale for $498, just incredible. So here are the learning objectives for this chapter. Uh, we're to define market re marketing research. Uh, we're be to be able to discuss kinds of organizations that conduct marketing research. We'll to we're to know the three reasons for studying market research, and we are to discuss why researchers should care about marketing research ethics. Uh, ethics is always a huge, concept and uh, issue no matter which decade you're looking at. So first things first, marketers need information. Data gets transformed to information and then action. Now one example I use for data versus information is if I told you that oil closed yesterday at $29 a barrel, that's data not really information because you can't really use it unless you know what oil has been selling for. You know, for the last six weeks it's been selling for 
20s to teens per barrel. So actually at $29 a barrel, it's really expensive compared to the last six weeks. If you look at the past five years, $29 is pretty cheap except for the last six weeks. So that would be information because you're able to compare it to something and make sense of what it is. If I told you that a JC Penney stock is selling for 21 cents, that tells you it's pretty cheap, but it doesn't tell you anything else. Now, if I told you that JC Penney stock was selling at 21 cents and they declared bankruptcy, then it doesn't matter how cheap the stock is, it's worthless because they declared bankruptcy. So why would you buy any other stock at a penny? Because it's not worth anything once they declared bankruptcy yesterday. Okay, so that's taking data and then transforming into information and then taking action on it. And if you see the gasoline prices have gone up, which they have, they went from 50 cent, 51 cents a week and a half ago to, I believe it's 86 cents yesterday uh, on the wholesale market, then you might want to fill up your gas tanks because you know that the retail stores are going to, the gas stations are going to start raising their prices. If it was the opposite, if it went from 86 cents to 51 cents on the wholesale market, you would wait to put any gas in your car until the prices come down at the gas stations because you know that the wholesale prices have dropped dramatically. Okay, okay. so marketers need information. Marketers need information about environments which they operate. It's easy to confuse data with information, which is why I try to give those examples to try and show the difference between the two, between the raw facts and the recorded measures of certain phenomena. Uh, which are all both examples of data and then information which is transforming those into something that you can actually use to make a decision whether to buy gasoline today or not buy gasoline today would be a decision to, to you to make based on the information that you gathered derived from the data that I gave you okay organizations formal communication link with the environment um, that can depend on the actual company itself. You can use everything from the internet, social media, uh, people in the stores, uh, whatever form of communication you want uh, to link yourself to them, to the customers. And then through marketing research, the organization gathers and interprets data from environment for use in developmental and monitoring the firm's marketing plans. Okay, so obviously with the COVID COVID-19, the pandemic, everything has changed. So your environment has completely changed. Uh, so you would have to make, uh, you have to develop and implement and then monitor a completely new marketing plan based on the pandemic, the, the effects of the pandemic having on your business. Um, so who does marketing research? Uh, producers of products and services. Well, that's not actually correct. It should say producers of goods and services because a product is both a good and service combined. So that's actually inaccurate. Uh, it should be changed to a good there. Advertising agencies also use market research and marketing research companies, of course, use market research. Oh, there we go. Who does marketing who does marketing research? Producers of, product, of goods and services. So organizations that produce the goods or deliver services for businesses or consumers often conduct research designed to develop the market for their product and service. Um, in the last six weeks, uh, going from uh, shopping to having things delivered. So if you were uh, an Amazon independent contractor, that delivers products, your business would be booming right now. Uh, they just came out with that last year here in Oklahoma that I saw. And so if you wanted to do that, you could lease a van through them and then pick up the products, uh, probably in Oklahoma City, and then deliver them here locally. Uh, and that's what you're an independent contractor. If you had done that uh, towards the end of last year, uh, this first half of the year would have been uh, an economic boom for you, uh, unlike most of the rest of the country. Okay. Just like delivery services, Grubhub, and those type of things, uh, they did very well 
the first part of the year, as did pharmaceuticals. Um, who does marketing research? Advertising agencies uh, often conduct research designed to help create a measure of effectiveness for advertising campaigns, uh, determine market potential for proposed new products uh, or the client's market share, and better understand consumers and their interests and behaviors. Uh, my son and I made comments the other day as to why um, certain companies are advertising when it's closed. I mean, why are they advertising uh, sporting events? Uh, why are you advertising sit-down restaurants? Uh, you know that they should have changed the marketing plan immediately as soon as everything shut down, so that they didn't waste funds. Or if they already signed the contract that they had to put a commercial on then they should have changed the commercial to be more of a, a supporting role during the crisis, as opposed to trying to get people to come in the door when the doors were locked. Advertising agencies, media agencies, MEC conducted an extensive project to better understand women shoppers in 542 smaller Chinese cities. Uh, and then here is the difference in the products. I'm sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the segmenta segmentation study uncovered five distinct segments uh, for the 542 smaller Chinese cities, uh, cities of women shoppers. Uh, pressure cooker was 20%, traditional is 5%, practical is 48%, achievers 58%, undecided was 35%. Number in parentheses indicate the percentage that had accessed the internet. Okay, there we go. Okay, so marketing research companies specializing in connecting market research, rank uh, Nielsen Company, then Cantor, and IMS Health, GFK, and IPSA. IPSIS, IPSIS. And so those are United States, uh, United Kingdom, Germany, and France. Um, why study marketing research? Marketing research can be rewarding and fun. All of us are consumers of marketing and public opinion research. Uh, managers need to know the research process, including what to expect marketing research to be able to deliver. The reason that um, analytical people are used uh, for data analysis, but they really don't like market research for the most part if they're truly um, analytical is because there's never a right answer until after the fact. So when you say is a marketing campaign or marketing uh, model or strategy a good one, well, the answer is it depends. If it's effective and it works, then it's good. If it doesn't work, then it's not. Um, one of the most, one of the most Awarded ones was Where's the Beef from Wendy's back in the early 80s. Everybody loved that commercial, but it didn't increase sales. The revenue of the burgers at Wendy's did not improve. So therefore, even though the, the, the marketing campaign and the commercials and the little old lady that uh, was made famous, it didn't help sales. So therefore, it was a bust as far as marketing is concerned. Because the whole point of marketing, marketing happens when something of value is transferred for something else of value. So that means when somebody actually pays for something or agrees to pay for something and the exchange is made, that's when marketing actually happens, which is the difference between advertising and marketing. Uh, and then here's the stages, the primary data. Uh, then you have the formulation of the problem, determine research design, analyze, interpret. Prepare the research report and then identify the source, data source and aggregation. And that is our the end of this chapter. Hope you're having a great day.